Kyle Meredith here with Bob Bethany from Best Coast. Welcome. Hello. Hi. It's, it's good to see you in Louisville. Thank you. Uh, good to be here. Love finally. the new record. Thank finally, you. you're right, finally. I didn't know if you'd really been here or not, but... Uh, Bob has a long history with yeah. here. Do you? I used to play in a band from here. Which band? The Four Carnations. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep, yep. Strong level ties with the Four Carnations. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, I would come out here for rehearsals, and uh, I really liked it. So, after that band stopped playing, I would just come out here to hang out. Yeah. Well, welcome back. It's good to see you. And welcome. Thank you. And we're talking about the new record because uh, this, uh, I don't know, it, it, do, you, do you call this is the biggest record so far? It feels like that. I mean, the first one really was a huge launching and everything, but what this new record is doing really feels kind of like what you've been trying to do this whole time. Is that accurate? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, like, sort of. I think it's just like a natural evolution of, like, who we are now. Yeah. Um, when we first started, I think it was just sort of like trying to figure out some footing. And then the second record was definitely like figuring out more footing. <laughs> and then I think we just toured so much and played enough together that we just kind of got to a point where we were like, okay, let's just make a record without really thinking about what we're doing and just kind of go for it. And yeah, it feels like the most effortless thing we've we've done thus far. And that's how it's supposed to feel. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is supposed to be a fun job, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I don't know if that, I mean, when you're doing art and, and when it comes down to like, this is part of the art and everything, and when you're being criticized and, and everything else, I mean, that does take away from the fun of it. So do you, I mean, you've got to shut it out, right? You just got to shut it out and say, we've got to have fun. Yeah. yeah, I think we're, I mean, we just try and make something that we like, yeah. and hopefully other people will like it too, and just try and not pay any mind to what anybody else is saying. I don't know that I've ever heard an artist, though, say, I'm going to make something I don't like. Like, I don't like it, but... <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's just more like, we could, uh, I'm sure a lot of people would have been happy if we just kept making crazy for you mm -hmm. over and over mm -hmm. again, but that's not who we are. Yeah as people and that's not the sound that we're into right now so and good yeah because you don't need to be three doors down or something <laughs> like that not that you're anywhere near that but you know talk about bands Sounds too bad <laughs> yeah. should be. i guess the money's are yeah right? then you, know, you wouldn't be here but you know what they're going to be doing they're going to be just playing free shows at the state fair soon so oh, i'm down with fair. that yeah <laughs> lots of fried food yeah exactly pickles Let's see where the bar is for Best Coast at yeah. this point. This is not what I expected. <laughs> uh, one thing I do, I do want to bring up, though, uh, in, in some of your pre-interviews for this album, you know, I guess you get the question like, like, oh, who are you listening to when you were doing this record? And, and I, you know, I've read that it wasn't really about that this time around. But you started name-dropping the Primitives. And I thought, that's awesome, because I don't see anyone talking about them. <laughs> like, that's not a band that people really remember. Yeah. I'm pretty old. I so. feel, yeah, <laughs> Bob is old, but also I grew up, like, my introduction to the Primitives was because of the Dumb and Dumber mm -hmm. soundtrack, mm -hmm. um, you know, with Crash being, like, the biggest song in that movie. He's never even seen Dumb and Dumber, so when he brought up the Primitives in the studio, I was like, oh, Dumb and Dumber, and then he was like, what? And, I was like, <laughs> and then I realized he hadn't seen it, and we talked about it or whatever, but I feel like that's a really cool thing about Bob and I is that because he's older than me and his knowledge of music is like very like extensive in sort of a different realm than mine is uh -huh. so we kind of combine those two things and I think that's sort of what like where you get Best Coast from is just sort of like both of our different like I said like just our different knowledge on specific right. things it's a, that's a nice marriage of music yeah I was always <laughs> curious about that too the different generations like like, uh, I'm only a few years older than you, a few years younger than you, so, you know, the 90s again was kind of my thing, and I don't have a good relationship with the late 90s music, you know, like Sugar Ray and, oh. and, and all these things. And when I see, when I hear you, you know, bring up those, and I think, from anything I know about Bob, <laughs> like, is there just some point in the studio that you're looking and you're going, no. I no, will not actually, follow you there. The Sugar Ray thing, came, that was, I was the one who brought it up first. Um, and yeah, when that music was popular, I was not a big fan of it. But later on, I, I started listening. And I was like, you know what? They actually have like some good songs that are catchy and that I found that I enjoyed listening to. So one of Beth's songs, I was like, 
oh, this is the one with kind of the Sugar Ray feel to it. <laughs> She's like, wait, does it? And then she started listening to a bunch right in the, the mix room. And then I think and you tweeted, the, became, you're like, yeah. is every Best Coast song no, really No, I or, tweeted like, a sugar is Ray's? it a good or a bad thing when you're in the <laughs> studio and you ask yourself, does this song sound like Sugar Ray? And then I said, this is a, a good thing. And then it became like just... We ran with it. It was yeah. like our producer well, you're it. was like he was trying to get us, us to do a cover. Yeah, and like yeah. He, would, he like went on that weird secret email that he had and was sending me photos. Oh he was yeah, like yeah, yeah. Frank texting me like pictures of like Mark <laughs> McGrath. It, it went very yeah. deep. And then Mark McGrath tweeted at me and was like, "Thank you for the shout out in Rolling Stone." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh my God, we've come full wow. circle." Wow, that was awesome. Yeah, you got shout out by Mark McGrath. I did. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's when a big was, moment, when I guess. I was Thirteen. <laughs> that, that's, that's I would it. have been done. You've brought up uh, with a lot of that, and, and I guess since we're, we're talking about age, you know, I think you've said mentioned that a lot, like, because you're always referencing your past, like, that's who I was now, I'm 28, and I, I see that you're always saying, like, I'm 28. And in another sense, when I hear you say that, I think, okay, in the rock and roll world, you're knocking on 30, and that's a different thing. Like, it, does that actually mean anything to you when you're looking at it in that kind of ageist sort of way? Um, I mean, I feel like, I don't even know so much about the the ageism in like rock or whatever, but just to be like knocking on 30s door is a bit, I didn't really like, I don't know. I didn't really think about my age very much. And then I feel like when I started doing press about this record and I would say like, I'm 28, I was like, whoa, I'm old. But then I'm like, I'm really not old at all. But 28 is like, not old. I'm still very young. Bob's here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. He's exactly. always going to be older. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I also think that like this job kind of just, it, even when, I mean, you meet like, for example, the band that's opening for us there called Lovely Bad Things. And I think the oldest person in the band is 23. Yeah and they don't act 23. Like it sort of makes you, <laughs> either you don't act 23 because you're forced to grow up or you just remain immature. This well, it's a two. job that allows you immaturity. <laughs> yeah, this exactly, is, yeah. This is Neverland. It's basically like oh, you is... have an adult, yeah, it's like I always call it adult daycare. Yeah. <laughs> it's like someone's just like, wake up, all right, go to sleep. <laughs> but it, I mean, it sounds like you're handling it well. It sounds like you're actually handling everything well uh, from, from I don't know what you've had to deal with on Twitter and in the press here and there. Not that it's been nearly like a crisis or anything like that, but it's kind of been interesting to watch. But, you know, that's what you talk about. You're like, but I'm in a good spot. And that's also a scary thing to hear from a musician. Like, <laughs> I'm in a good spot. And that obviously didn't affect you guys because, again, I'll say that this is your best record yet. Thank yeah. you. You know, but does there need to be struggle? Do you need some kind of struggle? You know, you found other things to write about, personal things, insomnia jealousy, whatever, you know, like, do you need that struggle as, well, as a writer to, to find the song? Luckily for myself, I create inner struggle with everything I do. So um, I do actually like, I feel like if I were in any other profession, I might actually be like, this is a problem. But because of the fact that like, I'm an artist and I'm creative and I enjoy making like very personal, like relatable music, it, it suits what I do. So I feel like usually like when, uh, you know, like, yeah, I, I, somebody asked me that recently, like, but if you're okay now, like, what are you gonna write about? I was like, don't worry. There's <laughs> yeah. plenty of things for me to freak out about. <laughs> it's constantly happening. Like so. we're not gonna get the shiny, happy people no. version of Best Coast no. anytime soon. No, 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 yeah. no. That's and, right. Like, no, that probably won't ever. Even I feel like, like feeling okay even there's a reason why I said okay because yeah, like, it's not feeling you know, great it's no, not I'm feeling yeah. awesome nobody yeah. you know it's like you feel awesome maybe for like five seconds out of the day and then you're like back to being like okay I guess I'm just pushing through you know <laughs> we're just realistic people and I think that like sometimes people are like well it's just like you're whiny or you're negative it's like I'm just being real why though, say that well like why even put the time why listen if, yeah. you're gonna, if that's how you're gonna yeah. feel you yeah. know why but also good luck with your fake happiness because yeah. when you crash from that those are the ones that snap yeah. and it gets really dark you always seem like such a pleasant kid yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah exactly until the end there are you guys and, and bob so i've learned now that you you're having this history and everything you've been in the bands before but but like learning to control your career this is usually where i hear a band say we figured out how to say no you know the first 
album or whatever, you're just trying to make that name, and you're like, we'll do anything, anything, and then you get to the third and fourth record, and you're like, no, we're not doing Did that? Has that come about where you've had to just start pushing away? I don't know if opportunities is the right thing, because you want to grab those, I suppose, but just not letting the industry roll over you. Uh. We're, like, not the kind of people that would ever do anything we don't want to do. Yeah, like we've always we, been that way. Yeah, like, we, from, I feel like that was part of the reason why I really liked him when I met him when I was younger, because, he, no offense, but he was, he was older than me, but he had, like, the same sort of, like, punk attitude that I had when I met him, and I was a 19-year-old punk girl, and I was just like, yeah, this guy's cool. He, like, is, like, you know, He's not like, well, he actually does follow all the rules. Like, he won't yeah, even yeah. jaywalk. <laughs> but I was just into, like, his, the fact yeah. that, like, he didn't, he was, he's not a pushover, you know? And I feel like a lot of people are. And a lot of times when you're not a pushover and you're surrounded by pushovers, people look at you and think that you're, they're like, oh, that person is, like, too intense or too aggressive. It's like, no, I just stand up for myself and I don't, I'm not ever going to say yes to something that I is going to make me miserable you know it's like there's plenty of things yeah already doing that in the world back you know? to the, back, so, back to that yeah, part exactly. about that's that's how you find but it but i feel like you know we've been very fortunate to have a lot of really amazing opportunities offered to us and there have been things that we've you know been offered and we've tried and then very quickly into it we'll say like no this isn't going to work i mean for example like we were originally supposed to make this record with butch walker and we went into the studio like three days into it, and it was nothing personal. It was just like this isn't gonna work, and it was totally fine. You and know, you're it able was to like pull that without. Yeah, and it was just a thing where it's like you need to be able to like, we're very intuitive people, and like you have to be able to read that intuition and know when something's wrong because if you just go with it, then at the end of it, you're gonna be like, what did I just then do? That's when you put out the album, like, you know? well, I don't like it, but I gotta put yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, with all that in mind, Jewel City. Is more going to happen? With, no. Is, is that just kind of a one-time thing? Was, and... Yeah, it was more just like a thing that when we made Fade Away, um, I really wanted to put it out, and we weren't on Mexican Summer anymore. And so it was like, well, you can sign to another label and start with an EP, and then it was the deals were just like so. That's like yeah. where you learn to say no. Is right. where it's like, well, you want to do a five-deal a five album deal it's like no instead I'll just do my own label so I did that and yeah I am I'm not no but it's always there anything. yeah I mean it's cool that it existed and that I got to do it and that I got to experience like what it's like to put something out yourself and have you know like a small team of people around you helping you with it um, and then what it's like to be more focused on like making the art and being the voice of what you're doing and letting the, you know, but I think too, like, I've become a lot more vocal now on like what I want and like, no, and just creatively, like, I, for example, like I've come up with every music video we've done for this record, like I've written the treatment myself. In the past, I didn't ever do that. I was just like, bring stuff to me and I'll pick something. And I think that like, Maybe potentially having the label kind of helped me with that because there were a lot of decisions that I had to make myself. Um, where in the past I would just have managers and you know label people just make decisions for me. So that's yeah, a good way to learn the business. That's yeah. a totally good way. Yeah, having that side of it. Uh, and, and finally, and this has nothing to do with any of this. I'm curious, Bob. Yes. Best obscure music documentary. Oh. Recommend obscure. me one. Because I, I guess I read this on your, on the band Facebook page that that's a, something really impressive about you. Oh, okay, I know. <laughs> I didn't is... know what that meant, but I thought if someone's going to recommend me something that I can watch. Yeah, it's actually two movies, and the way I found out about it was uh, Slint did a, a festival, and they had Todd Brashear from Wild and Wooly curate a video channel. And so there was a documentary that screened, and it's actually a two-parter. It's called uh, Driver 23 and Slash, part two is called The Atlas Moth. And it's about this guy, I think he's in Ohio, who has a metal band, but he also has these kind of mental, like OCD kind of things. So it's just about his struggle through life. He's married to a woman who's a clown. Oh, she's an actual clown and she ends up leaving him. and the, 
Uh, but the, the most memorable scene is he's trying to get equipment to play their first show. Uh -huh. And instead of just taking it up the stairs, he has to create a whole pull, or, pull and uh, lev levy yeah. and pulley, pulley system. And it's still the worst design ever. <laughs> and it probably takes him four times as long to get the stuff out of the basement. But yeah, Driver 23, Atlas Moth. Uh, it's amazing. Let's check it. It kind of sounds like the movie that came out uh, with uh, Michael Fassbender with the um, paper mache head. Oh, I haven't and seen that one. Frank. Oh, okay. That's a cool one. Yeah. But it's kind of like that, kind of a, you know, just OCD sort of thing. Anyway. Yeah, you'll see things that you don't think are real. In yeah. This, but it, it's all real. Interesting. All right, Beth, Bob, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you around. Thanks. All right. See ya.